Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to set up moving platforms and one-way collisions for a 2D platformer game inside of Godot 4. So we're starting basically from a very template-y start. We have some basic tiles we can stand on. We're using the character body 2D template controller, so we can jump and we can move around, and that's pretty much it. So to go ahead and add a platform to our platformer level, uh, let's go ahead and right-click on our base level, add a child node, and we're going to be looking for a animatable body 2d so you'll see here that it says that this is a physics body that can only move by script or animation so you can either move the position of the body by using script and changing its position or i think the easier way for most people is going to be to use animation in the form of an animation player and then in that animation you set up the movement patterns for uh, how your platform should move around the scene so let's go ahead and create the animatable body 2D. Let's double click on its name and I'm going to name it to moving platform. Now let's right click on it and save the branch as a scene so we can reuse this asset. So we'll save it, um, let's say in a folder called objects. So I'll just create that folder objects and we have moving platform.tscn. So let's save that. Okay, now jump into the scene for the moving platform. And obviously we can't see anything because there's no sprite yet. So let's right click on the moving platform, add a child node and look for sprite 2D. So for the sprite, we can use basically any texture you want. So the pack I'm using for this tutorial is Pixel Adventure 1. It's completely free on itch.io. So it's good for testing these kind of basic functions in Godot. So uh, let's go down to, let's say, terrain here. And uh, there's a few tiles here that we could use for a semi-convincing platform. So let's drag terrain.png into the texture. Obviously, we're not going to use the whole thing here, but I think we could use this bit over here to be a platform. And that could either be a moving platform or a stationary one where we can drop down later with our one-way collisions. Uh, so let's go to, let's see, region, enable the region, and everything will disappear. So in order to select the region where we actually want the sprite to show, we have to hit edit region. So Let's do snap mode, grid snap, zoom in here, and just grab the bits you want. So either of these three, I think will work just fine. Let's grab the first chunks here. So with a eight by eight grid snap, it becomes pretty easy to select this part of the sprite. So click close. And if you zoom out a bit and locate it, you should be able to see our sprite selected from that tile map now. So a moving platform is going to require us to have some kind of collision shape. If we hover over this warning sign, we'll see that we need a collision shape 2D or a collision polygon 2D. So let's right click on moving platform, add a child node, collision shape 2D. And I think a rectangle shape would work perfect here. So with collision shape 2D, go to shape in the inspector and choose rectangle shape. So now we can just take this shape and adjust it to be roughly the size of our platform. So it makes sense in the game. Really, if you adjust it right, you can pretty easily get it to just be a uh, perfect snap to the pixels of our sprite there, which is one of the nice things about Godot. It's usually easy to manage it like that. So let's save the platform. And now uh, we need an animation player in order to actually animate this platform. Uh, for right now, we could test it by uh, putting it in the level at least. So let's go back to the level and we have our moving platform here. Let's just move this left click and drag up to here. And we should be able to at least stand on it if we jump. So let's go ahead and hit play now. Just test that platform by jumping onto it with spacebar by default. And uh, we can see that we can stand on the platform and fall off of it. So it's working as we would expect. So let's hit close now and let's give it a animation. So in the moving platform scene, we need to right click on moving platform, add child node, animation player. And then uh, let's give it an animation. So I'll call it new. And let's say the animation name will be move loop, I suppose. Okay. So now we just need to set up how long it should take for the entire loop to occur. Uh, however many seconds you want, you can put it over here. Let's try two seconds for right now. And then let's go to zero on this uh, timeline. Go to add track, property track, moving platform. And we're going to look for the position. So node 2D position. Open that up as a property we can adjust. Right click, insert key on the node graph. So this will be a starting position. We can go to one second here, right click, insert a key for a new position. And it'll automatically animate the values between these two points. So let's see, what do we want our platform to do? We could just make it really simple, like it moves to the right and then moves back. So in order to set its new position, we can go to moving platform here. And to make sure we don't accidentally select the collision shape, let's uh, check this little box here, group 
selected nodes. So now if we click on the moving platform, we're going to move the platform itself. So just move it to where you want it to be. It can be over here to the right, or you can put it up to the top right or straight up or wherever you want it to be. So let's get it over here. Now go to transform where you'll see it has one change set up here. And then you're going to want to take the position and check the little keyframe here. Now that's going to update the keyframe value at this 1.0 seconds value. And then we have the value at the start of our animation. So if we go here and we hit play, it's going to move over to the right. But we might want it to also return to its starting position so that it's an actual loop. So let's just go to 2.0 right click insert key we can click on here and change the values directly in the inspector so zero for x zero for y and now if we check loop on the far right of our animation window and we hit play then we're going to get a right to left movement loop to occur and they're not limited to just having three keyframe points so you could easily do something like go to 1.5 and then move the position up here and let's try right click insert key here and uh, you'll see that the values that we updated the moving platform automatically assign here. And now we can hit play. So our animation now looks like this. Might be a little bit more interesting than just left and right. And to make sure that this animation is going to automatically play when the scene starts, click on this auto play on load button. And when we go and hit play, so let's go ahead and hit play. And you can see that the animation's working here. But uh, one issue is that it's actually changing the world position of the platform to right about here as well. So we probably want to add in one more node so that we can move around the world position and the animation will always reset it to back here. So in our moving platform scene, right click, add node. And let's call this a node 2D. And we want to right click on this and make it the scene root. So to make things a little bit more clear, let's uh, take the root here and call it moving platform. And then the second one, I'll, I'll just I'll just call this platform. So the actual platform is now a child of the moving platform, which will help us control the position. So let's go back out to platform level. And now if we move the moving platform root, you'll see that this adjusts the base location of the moving platform. But the actual sprite over here is still adjacent to wherever our moving platform is. So we do want to make sure that the position of the platform starts where our actual root node here is. So let's go to moving platform, click on platform. And let's see if we switch this to reset. Yeah, OK, there's our issue. We got to set this to zero zero for the reset values here as well. So that'll be basically the default value before we play any animation. And we can just go ahead and keyframe that. So when we reset, we're going to go back to zero zero. If we go to the platformer level, we should be able to see that reflected. Okay, so let's just position the platform where we want it to be. So right about there should be jumpable. So let's go ahead and hit play. And uh, you can see that because we added that root node, now our position, the starting position for the platform stays consistent with where we placed it instead of uh, teleporting over here. And if we placed more in the world, they'd also be able to have their own independent position. So if I duplicated this, and moved it over to the right. We just have two moving platforms going at the same time with the same animation. So we can jump here and uh, jump onto our second moving platform and so on and so forth. So next part for this tutorial, one-way collisions. Sometimes you want ground that you can approach from underneath, jump up, and then land on some layer above. But when you land up there, you don't fall through it automatically. It would uh, actually stop the player and surface ground still. But then you can also add in the ability to drop down, possibly by just pressing the S key one or two times, S for down. And then that would allow you to drop back down under the platform. OK, so digging a little bit more into the art assets, we have this uh, brown on platform and gray on platform we could try to use. So I'll just actually start by just dragging one of these sprites onto the scene. Um, let's position it there. Sure, why not? I'll right click on this and let's double click it to rename it and I'll call it one way platform. In order to add collisions to this platform, let's right click, add a child node and do collision shape 2D. So we'll need another rectangular shape here. So under shape, we'll do new rectangle shape 2D. And let's just adjust the size to match the platform, kind of like so. And you can zoom in with middle mouse wheel if you need to, makes it a little easier. OK, and then we have that. So to make it a one way collision platform, you just need to check one way collision over here on the right. By default, you'll see that the direction is down, meaning that if we approach from top 
the collision is going to occur trying to go downwards, but if we approach from underneath, it should not block our jumps. Of course, we also need to add a physics body for this to work. So right click on our one way platform, add child node, and let's look for body. So we can look for a static body 2D here, since this ground isn't going to move, unlike the platform, create. And let's just drag the collision shape under that static body. Okay, now we can go ahead and save the game and hit play. And if we jump, we should be able to land on the platform. So we can fall off the platform and we can keep jumping from underneath it. But it, by default, if you press down or S on your keyboard, which would normally be the go down direction, it's not going to drop us down under the platform. So you have to set up a little bit of custom script for that to work. So in order to do that, uh, let's go to player in the player script or wherever you're managing your controls we can add in a extra input check here. So you could do it like in the default script where we just do if input dot is action just pressed UI accept. So you could do it like it is in the default script here where during physics process, you just check if uh, the UI accept or in this case, it would be more like UI down action was just pressed. But I'll show you another way to do it real quick. So if we do function down here and underscore input, which is going to give you an input event. So I could actually type that out as input event here. Then whenever there is a input event, and that would be key presses on your keyboard, that kind of thing, then this function will run and we can check what input action actually just occurred, kind of like up here. So to do that, we would do if event dot is action pressed, then we'll give it the name of the action. So in this case, UI down, you can of course create custom actions in the project menu if you want to. So if we have uh, is action pressed UI down, then what we can do is just take the position of our player, and that's the position Y specifically, and then plus equals one pixel. Uh, when you're talking about up and down, down is actually positive values and up is negative values. So we also want to make sure we can only fall below a platform if we're actually on the ground. So character body 2D has this is on floor function we can use to check here. So we'll just add that as an extra condition down here. If event is action pressed UI down and 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 then let's just go up here, select this bit is on floor and paste that in there. Then we'll try to change the position by plus one. So let's hit play here. Let's go up to this platform now and hit S and you'll see that we immediately drop below the platform. Since we moved one pixel under, we've already passed through the collision shape and it's no longer going to block us as we're trying to drop below this platform. But if I come down here to where we have this very obvious large section of tiles and I press S, we're not going to drop below it because it has two way collision and the collision shape is much larger than one pixel here. So just dropping your position one pixel is a pretty decent way to take care of that issue being able to drop below your one way platform. And just to show it won't work with these moving platforms by hitting S or down arrow on your keyboard because these are not set up to be one way platforms. So that's basically how you do moving platforms and how you do one way collision platforms that you can jump up above and press down to drop down below inside of Godot. So I hope this little platformer tutorial helped you guys out there. If you want to download the project files and the scripts, you can get that on my Patreon down in the links below. Thanks for watching to the end. I've been Chris, and I'll see all of you in my future Godot content.